in India, uh, I think the World Bank has played an important influence, uh, though perhaps indirectly, not in the way I mentioned earlier, where other countries, where there were specific structural adjustment loans or IMF loans, uh, and where there was conditionality there relating to food subsidies. But if you read the literature, uh, on food subsidies in the 90s after liberalization started then you find that from 91 92 onwards each economic uh, survey of india starts having uh, comments like it's we need to reduce the food subsidy and uh, government uh, subsidies are increasing and food subsidies must go down and then you have actually uh, in 1996 a world bank report on uh, food subsidies in India. In fact, some of the authors were Indian, but it was a. It comes. In a, it came in a World Bank cover. So it was a World Bank document, where in fact the whole scheme of targeting, which was then implemented in India, was spelled out. So you can see that there's a very close ideological influence in even in the case of India, that. This uh, report argued that food subsidies were too high, that food subsidies were wasteful, that the existing system had too many leakages, and that the suggestion then was to bring in the targeted public distribution system. And that was exactly what was done in 96-97 we had this uh, you know below poverty line and above poverty line classification being brought in uh, now the the two points i'd like to just make about what's happened in india when you look at the uh, documents of the uh, budget documents on government subsidy they did not decline immediately as they did in other countries uh, when this targeting was introduced but i think the important point is the reason they didn't decline is because the food subsidy uh, which is reported in the budget is not just the subsidy going to the public distribution system but it's also subsidies going to the food corporation of india and subsidies going to because of the msp offered to farmers and so on so as long as the food corporation buys grain whether it's distributed or not, it's in the subsidy. And as you know, a few years ago, we had this absurdity of uh, 60 million tons of grain in the stocks uh, for which the government had to keep paying subsidies. So whether a person was able to consume it or not, it got counted in the food subsidy. But I think the more important point I want to make is that there seems to be enough evidence now from large number of small studies plus one large scale study done by the planning and evaluation office of the planning commission itself which states very clearly that targeting has failed and that large number of persons who are poor food insecure vulnerable whatever we call them however we classify identify them have been excluded from the bpl system and therefore are probably worse off in terms of access to minimum food and I would say that if we look at statistics, for example, which are coming out of the National Family Health Survey, uh, most recently the one which was done in 2005-06, the overall figure for India for the proportion of malnourished children is 46%. Five years ago when the survey was done in 98-99, uh, was it? or Yeah, or it was 98-99. Uh, the proportion was 47 percent so clearly we haven't whether it is to be done through the PDS or the combination of policies it's clear that we have not been able to make a dent on the problem of malnutrition in India